Oh, yeah. Okay, go ahead and play like for 20 seconds. you don't step on it, it gets slammed in a car door or anything, you know, you can send it back to me, I'll send you another one. And, because uh, I feel that confident about it. Okay, stop right now. Yeah, just... My flutes sound like this. This is the key of A. Shakuhachi, it's in C. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hey, it's Ron. Just playing my flute. I made a recording. It's called uh, Kalalau Stew. Um, actually, it actually was a dream come true since I do live an uh, unconventional life. I, I live out in the, in the woods, um, 11 miles from the nearest road. And, uh, but I, I, I'm a musician and I play with my friends a lot and I play alone a lot and it sounds good to me so I thought that I'd like to make a recording. And, uh, but you know, I didn't have any equipment to make the recording and I didn't know anybody, but I just thought that it was a good idea. And lo and behold, since I live in a world-class backpacking destination, you get to meet a lot of people, and uh, so I made connections. And I made I, I met a woman who said that she she she'd like to record me in, in San Francisco in the Bay Area. Well, I told her, you know, I uh, really uh, had a lot of gratitude for the offer, but um, I'm not leaving the woods to go to any metropolitan area to do anything. Actually, one of the titles on my song is "Time Is Money," and. Uh, in Kalalau, I meet a lot of really successful uh, people, and they're financially doing really well. But they don't have the time. They're stressed. They've got different problems that they encounter, and they come out to the woods to relax and recharge their battery, which they do. But I realized that the real true wealth is the time. You have enough time to nurture your own self. So. The title of the song is Time is Money. Let's turn it off for a moment. Yeah, so the dream went on and I met a woman who wanted to record me in the Bay Area and I said, well, that wasn't possible because I wasn't going to leave the woods to do anything at all. <laughs> Especially make money since I was having a good time. But, uh, no, and then, wait, I met a really wealthy man that lived on the island that likes to come to Kalalau. And, uh, oh wait, they were both ended up camping at the same time and she told him what she wanted to do, how I turned her down. And then I mentioned to her maybe she could get some portable equipment. So all of a sudden um, she connected with this wealthy man and uh, the next uh, summer all of a sudden the equipment was there to do the recording. And she had a place to stay when she arrived on the island. and. It all hooked up, and I was still in the valley and had never left the valley. And uh, then we did the recording, and then it took a little while, and then I had to have a little cash to get the finances up, which I make some sales for my flutes in the valley, and actually I had a financial benefactor that helped me with the rest, and I had a hundred, um, at that time, tapes of Kalalau Stew, delivered to me on the beach, but I never left Kalalau. Actually, the woman sent me an email by kayak to Kalalau Beach. I got an email by kayak and said that she needed the names of the songs and the names of the players, which she didn't have yet. So I actually sent it out with a backpacker who made a phone call that got to the lady that put the whole album together, and I never left the valley once, never made a phone call, never had to deal with something that comes from the outside world. You know, it is for me, Dave. So that's how my dream came true. Yeah, so the title to the, to the CD is uh, Kalalau Stew. Uh, and there's a lot of meaning to the, the title uh, because uh, we cook a lot of food uh, communally and uh, it's actually an international set of people that come to Kalalau. It's a world-class backpacking destination and uh, they all come in and a lot of people are looking to gather and share with other people because they hear that we're out here and there is something like that going on. And so everyone's bringing something to the stew. We make a lot of stew out there. And we make the stew whatever shows up. And it's just amazing because you couldn't write down all these recipes because they change every night. And it, what's amazing is it always tastes so good. And it's cooked on a wood fire, which I know has a lot to do with it. And the, and the pure 
water of the river and uh, it makes everybody come together and eat and then we play music and we laugh and we just have the best time ever so that's why the the cds call out stew and i just want to put out the vibration of that it really is one of the most uplifting things people can do is get together and eat and make memories and so that's why it's called Chakuhachi. It's really a real meditative instrument. It's not like the side flute where you hold it straight down. And it's real centering. It's really my pride and joy. I, it's one of my favorite flutes to play. And I, I sell these flutes made out of bamboo. It's a Japanese instrument called a Chakuhachi. And uh, they actually you can buy these and they can cost thousands of dollars and I'm talking some serious money and um, this one sounds just as good as, as the expensive ones although it's not an art it's not an art object and uh, those flutes are made from the root piece and there's a lot of nodes or sections roots it's all gnarly that they have to bore through do a lot of lengthy work to reproduce a natural tube that is at the top of the stand of bamboo but you don't have to do any work cleaning the inside out and uh, but these things play just as beautifully and the sounds just as good how come it's like that well I'll tell you why uh, in ancient times when the samurai were taking over Japan and they they, they took over and uh, they didn't want anyone to have a sword to them so the commoners the peasants weren't allowed to own swords so they were at a great disadvantage now but wait they had to think hard about this and they thought you know we all play these flutes and they only made a law you couldn't carry a sword but nothing about a flute so they started making the flutes from the bottom they started making from the root piece and it's hard and solid like oak. And if you did use it in clubs, somebody, you could have some, at least some equalness if someone could get a sword. That's why they made them from the bottom. Uh, now now they, they've become an odd object and they are exquisite pieces. And if you could afford one, it would be great. Get one. Uh, mine's not an odd piece, but I play my flute and I've to tell you the truth, I haven't even seen these flutes because no one wants to carry it around in their backpack. <laughs> but I hear the recordings and it, I swear they're identical to the flutes that I make from the top piece. And the top piece, the sound can be just as good, but the whole deal is the hand selection of the piece, which I have to spend a good while Sometimes I find a treasure drove, I get a bunch at one time, but a lot of times I really got to seek it out, and I go to more than one bamboo forest. So my, my pieces, they, they sound uh, just comparable as the other pieces, and that's the history of the Shakuhachi. And uh, I'll just play you another little note. 